Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kado mo shada baham. You are worthy of our praise and adoration, O God. There is none like unto you, O God. We lift your name higher. And we bless your name this morning, O God. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your grace, O God. None can be compared unto you. Whom shall we liken thee unto our God? And whom shall we compare thee unto? You sit upon the circles and rather upon the clouds, O God. Father, this morning we magnify your name. We lift your name higher. We exalt your name and we bless you, O God. We bless your name, O God, for you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise and adoration, O God. The Bible said that God is a spirit, and then I must worship him, must worship him and in spirit and truth. For the hour is coming and now is where the true worshipers of God will worship him in spirit and in truth. And this morning you want to worship God in spirit and in truth. He said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Of living waters and hey, Kado Shata Masunte Kaya Branti Tibiham, hey, Maluko Sheta Tayan. For the hour is coming and now is um, when the true worshippers of God will worship God um, in spirit and in truth. Um, uh, we worship your majesty. Um, the Bible shut in heaven, um, there was thrown in heaven, and the essence of this sat upon his throne. Um, and the Bible said, um, Alo Sopranta Tayan, um, the stood. Um, there was rainbow around the throne of God and encompassed the throne of God where 24 seats and that 24 seat was seated upon by the 24 elders each clothed with their white garment down to their feet and, and upon their head with the golden crown the Bible said the 24 elders and the four living creatures they do not rest but each morning they do not rest but day and night they give glory and they Give honor. This morning you want to join Ali Boshanta Laga with the saints in heaven and with the celestial beings. And we worship our Messiah and our creator. For we were created in his image and likeness. And we were created for worship. The Bible said it was one time Jesus met ten lepers by the gate. They were lepers, and in the olden days, leprosy had no cure. And those who were infected with leprosy. And those with leprosy were segregated and separated from the people. Uh, they could not fellowship with their people. Uh, they could not be with their family. They were rejected by their family. They were neglected by their family because leprosy was a contagious disease. It was a contagious disease. And the only way to prevent it from being spread uh, was segregation. And they were segregated and they were placed at the outskirts of the community. They could not come into the community. They lost their identity with their people, with their family, they lost identity with their family. But the Bible said there was a time that Jesus Christ was passing through, and when he got to the gate, he saw this lepers and they cry out to Jesus for help and Jesus said go and show yourself to the priest and they went to show themselves to the priest and the Bible said out of the ten lepers it was only one leper who came to give glory and to give honor the Bible said this one leper followed Jesus followed him ran after him bowed down when he met Jesus and, and gave thanks and glory and honor and he said Jesus if not for you I would have still been by the gate if not for you I would have still been a leper, if not for you, I would have still been insane. But the Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son Jesus, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but rather have everlasting life. We have received this great salvation, and we have, oh, we have every reason to thank God, we have every reason to give honor to whom that honor is due. But the Bible said, A man of grief acquainted with sorrow, he was a man of grief acquainted with sorrow. The Bible said it was without beauty and majesty to attract anyone. That means that because of our salvation, because of our, our salvation and redemption, Jesus left his throne of glory and Anna took the form of a servant. He died on the cross of Calvary shamefully for our sake. And this morning, he alone deserves our glory. He alone deserves our praise.
Lusota Kantele Benua Kataham, Luso Cabranti Kibiakaham, is an art of your belly shall flow rivers of level waters. Ilo Maluso Kadanti Kihataham, Rababo Shantili Biako Zundalagaha, Rima Luso Tiki Ado Shataham, is an art of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And this morning, let the rivers of living waters flow from within you. Let there be a best of the spirit within you. The Bible shed there's a spirit in man, but the inspiration of God giveth him understanding. Hey, Malo Shontekaya. He said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Man, Tika Shontekaya. Ah, Branti Dibi Ako Shandele Belebe. We flow out of our belly, out of our spirit. Hey, Man Toko Sotaga. Re Malu Shontekaya. Rababo Shantikaya. Libran Telegede. The Bible said in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. The Spirit of God had to move upon the waters to create a creative atmosphere, to create a conducive atmosphere for the Word of God to be actualized. My God. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters before God released a word. The Spirit of God had to precede the word of God because the Spirit of God is the agency of the word of God. The Spirit of God brings the word of God into life. So when God shall let them be to life, let there be light because the spirit of God had already moved um, as an agency and as an agency of the word um, the spirit of God had to bring the word of God into life and the Bible said and there was light this morning I pray that the spirit of God will move in our life that the spirit of God will move in every area of our life whether it be academics, whether it be marriage, business, in every situation, in every area of our life, our social life, our mental, mentality, social, emotional aspect, physical aspect of our life, I pray that the Spirit of God will move, will move this morning in every area of your life. Father, we thank you for your Spirit. We thank you for your Spirit. It is not by mind. It is not by power. It is by your spirit and by your grace. And this morning we are grateful to be alive. We appreciate the gift of life this morning, Lord. It is not he that runneth or he that will let by God that showeth mercy. And this morning, if you hear the sound of my voice and you are alive, it is a good thing. It's a great blessing. The Bible said that every good and perfect gift comes from above. What a good gift. What a perfect gift to be alive this morning. It comes from above. It comes from above. It comes from above. It comes from above. Father, we thank you for this perfect gift. The gift of life. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, I want to look at a message that has been on my heart for about two weeks now. Two weeks now, I've been talking about the favor of God. I've been preaching on the favor of God. And this morning, I believe that you're going to be blessed with the word of God that is coming to you. I always tell people, I don't just preach word, I preach the spirit. Because the Bible says that, Paul said that I may speak not with the enticing words of human wisdom, but speak to demonstrate the power and might of the spirit. Your faith is not dependent on the words of man. Your faith is dependent on on the gospel on the true gospel your faith is dependent on the words of god on the spirit of god hallelujah and the bible shall there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of god give it him understanding he said ask uh, there's a spirit in man but the inspiration of god give it him understanding and no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation but only men speak as they were inspired by the spirit of god so the inspiration of god has to bring and the spirit of god has to bring us inspiration and when that inspiration and anointing come upon us we speak as we are commanded Commanded. We speak as we are commanded. The Bible said that the letter kill it, but the spirit quicken it. And I believe that this morning you'll be quickened by the spirit of the letter. That you'll be quickened 
by the spirit of the later. This morning I want to look at favor, God's favor. God's favor. God's favor. God's favor. Hallelujah. We need the favor of God in our life. We need the grace of God in our life. The Bible says, By strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. And except the Lord build the house, said, Build it in vain that builded it. So accept the favor of God is with you and upon you. You can work very hard and tirelessly. But it will come to no avail. No avail. You cannot evidently prove your labor and your hard work. Because it is not he that and not we that will it by God that should work mercy. And it is not by strength. It is by the grace and by the mercies and the providence of God. Hallelujah. Joseph had nothing. Joseph had the presence of God. God was with Joseph. The favor of God was with Joseph. That is why his father made a cloth of many colors. It was response to the favor of God that Joseph had. Joseph was highly favored by God. And the evidence of that favor, the, the evidence of the favor of God upon Joseph's life is seen when he was at the house of Potiphar. The Bible said that everything that he did in the house of Potiphar was blessed. Was blessed because of the favor of God on his life. And God elevated him. Potiphar elevated Joseph. Potiphar elevated Joseph because he saw that the favor of God was with him. He had obtained favor with God and God prospered everything that Joseph did in, the, in his house. Hallelujah. So what we need is the favor of God. God being with us. The grace of God on us. Jesus. We need the favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. Abraham was highly favored. God, because of the favor of God that was upon Abraham, Abraham found favor with God. So God commanded Abraham to leave the hell of Shaden. God favor located Abraham. Favor located Abraham. And God asked Abraham to leave the hell of Shaden to the place he's showing him. God did not call his father, it is his mother. God did not call his sister. God told Abraham specifically, leave. Because Abraham had found favor with God. What we need in life is the favor of God. It's the favor of God. And I'll first speak on the first point of encounter of the favor of God in every believer and every Christian. It's life. Before we even came to Christ, the favor of God located us before we became born again. Yes. That is the first significant dimension of God's favor and God's grace. Now I'm going to use grace and favor interchangeably. Yes. Because favor, grace, and mercy they have a, 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 a common link. There's a close association among favor, mercy, and grace. Now, the Greek word for favor is charis. And the Hebrew word for favor is shen. Now, when you look at the, the, the Greek, and when you look at both the Greek and the, the Greek and the Hebrew etymology of favor. You realize that what? They, 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 they mean the same thing. They are translated grace and favor. When you look at the Hebrew and the Greek etymology of grace and favor, they mean the same thing. Shen and charis. Shen is the Greek word. Shen is the Hebrew word and charis is the Greek word. So when you read the King James Bible, 
for Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, the Bible says that Noah found in the King James said that Noah found grace with God. Hallelujah. So Noah found grace with God. That is the King James. And when you read the NASB, NASB, the Bible says that and Noah found favor with God. So that means that you can interchange favor and grace. You can substitute favor for grace and the equation will still be balanced. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's a close association among mercy, favor, and grace. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says that in, in, in the King James says that Noah found favor with him, Noah found grace with God, it, 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 it tends to reason also that Noah Noah found favor with God. So the NASB says that Noah found favor with God. And the King James Version also says that Noah found grace with God. So it tends to reason that no, uh, grace and favor can be what? Substituted and used interchangeably. Hallelujah. And it means the same thing. And you, you, you can see in the, in, the, in the epistles of Paul, when Paul was writing the epistles, okay, you realize that Paul will always pray that the saint will obtain favor we obtain grace. Is it a Paul, an apostle of Christ, and Timotheus, my brother, to the church in Colossae, that grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hallelujah. So when you read the introductory episodes, the, the introductory message of Paul's episodes, you realize that he's talking about grace and peace abounding unto the saint. So Paul understood the essence of God's grace and the essence of God's favor in the life of the saint. So he prayed earnestly that the saints will be filled with God's grace and God's favor. Hallelujah. So I want to read the Bible, the book of Colossians to buttress what I'm saying. Oh, we, we, we start with the, with the Romans. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when you read Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 1, verse 5, he said, By whom we have received grace, hallelujah, and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, hallelujah. So we have received grace, we have received favor. Let me take it from the verse. Said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of Christ, which he had promised afore by his prophet in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with power, my God. Jesus Christ declared to be the son of God with power. Jesus Christ is the son of God, declared to be the son of God with power. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. According to the spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from the dead. By whom we have received grace. By Christ we have received grace. We have received favor. Oh Jesus. My God. My God, my God, declared to be the Son of God with power. We declare boldly that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is God. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. Now, when you read the first episodes that Paul wrote to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth, you realize that in the, in the introductory message, in the greetings or in the salutation, Paul prayed earnestly for grace. He said that Paul, chapter 1, verse 1, reading downwards, is that Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. And sweetness our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth 
to them that are to be the saint. Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. We are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Called to be saint. With all that in every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Both years and hours. Hallelujah. Now verse 3. It's a grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul said in the introductory message, in the introductory letter, in the introductory letter or in the, in the introductory message of his episodes to the church in Corinth and the first letter he wrote to the church in Corinth in verse 3, he says that grace be unto you. Grace be unto you. Paul understood the essence of grace. Paul understood the essence of God's favor. And he prayed earnestly. And when you read all the Pauline epistles, and even when you read the epistles, Peter's epistles, John's epistles, well as that word, their the, the salutation or their or their greeting, they pray that the saint will be filled, the saint will be granted favor and grace, grace and peace. Hallelujah. And this morning I pray that the grace of God will come upon your life. That the favor of God will come upon your life. That God will extend his favor and his grace upon your life. Hallelujah. That you will never be the same again because of the favor and the grace of God that is upon your life. And as Christian and as saint, we need the favor and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to look at the first encounter and the first dimension of grace. That every believer encounters or God's favor. You see, when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God was our father. We could call God back then our father. Hallelujah. We had a relationship with God. God could come in the cool of the day to commune with man. But you see, when Adam and Eve sinned through eye tracing, when they see that the authority to the serpent and they obeyed the voice of the serpent and, re and did not regard the commandment of God, God in his justice dealt with Adam and Eve and with man. So God expelled man from the garden of Eden. So we became vagabond and street children. We became strangers. We couldn't even call God our father. Hallelujah. So we were not approved by God. We were not approved by God. We were not qualified to come in the presence of God. We lost favor with God. We lost favor with God. We lost favor with God. Evidently, in, in, in our various homes, sometimes when you misbehave in the house, you realize that your, 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 sometimes your parent responds to you, changes. Because in a way, you lose that favor that you had. And, 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 and you can lose favor. Yes. You can lose favor. So man, humanity lost favor with God. We were in the world without a father. We could not even call God our father. We lost our approval. We lost the acceptance to become a son of God. Hallelujah. But the Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son Jesus, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but rather everlasting life. It was grace and the favor of God that we had with God that brought Jesus. The Bible said, Beloved, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Hallelujah. What kind of love, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should become the sons of God? We were vagabond street children disapproved by God. We couldn't even call God our Father. But the Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son, Jesus. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but rather have everlasting life. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. 
So it was the favor of God that cost, that brought us into acceptance. Before we lost favor with God, we could not call God our Father. We could not call God our Father. The Bible said He has not given us the spirit of bondage to fear again, but He has given us a spirit for us to cry out, Abba, Father. Before we, before we found favor with God, we could not call out Him. We could not cry out to Him. We could not cry out to Him, Abba, Father. When we lost that favor, we could not cry out to Him, Abba, Father. We could not cry out to God and call Him our Father because we had lost favor with Him. We were disapproved. We were not accepted. We were not qualified to enter into His throne room. Hallelujah. 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 So the first dimension of God's favor and grace is towards our salvation. Hallelujah. So we act, we, 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 we gain approval. Jesus. We gained approval when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. The Bible said God was in Christ working towards our salvation and our reconciliation. God was in Christ working towards our salvation and our reconciliation. So for us to be reconciled again to God, a price had to be paid. A price had to be paid. And the chastisement of our peace, that means that the punishment of our peace was upon Jesus. He paid the price. And with the strife we are healed. Jesus. So we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We did not work out our salvation. No. It was Jesus who went through pain, who went through agony, who went through shame. A man of grief acquainted with sorrow. It was without any beauty and majesty to attract anyone. Favor and grace. There was a loud cry in heaven, whom shall I send and who shall go? Jesus said, Father, send me. I will go. I will go. And I will be an atoning sacrifice for my people. I want to bridge the, 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 the disconnection. I want to bring your people back again. Jesus. We gain reconciliation with God when Jesus Christ came. What a grace. What a grace. What a grace. What a grace. Grace has located us. Grace has found us. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Behold, all things are passed. So before you came into Christ, a, a certain grace has to find you. A certain favor has to locate you. Remember where you were. Remember that, that life you were in. A hopeless life. A life without any hope. A shameful life. A life of sin and unrighteousness. A life of ungodliness. A life of misery and bitterness. That was the life we were in. We were used by Satan for his seductive pleasure. We followed after the fashion and the likeness of this world. We didn't have any form of godliness within us. We were in sin and condemnation. Jesus. We didn't have that, that sense of belonging to the kingdom. Our soul was on the road to hell. We lost our identity with him. But the Bible said, for God so loved the world. Jesus. That Jesus came to his own. And his own received him not. He came to his own. He came to the, to, to, to the Jews. But the Jews received him not. But as many that receive him, to them he gave them power to become the sons of God. They are those who have heard the gospel 
They are those who have heard the message of the cross. They are those who have heard the gospel and yet they have hardened their heart and they don't believe the gospel because they have not found favor. But you, you have believed in the gospel. You have believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is God. You have you, you, you professed and confessed him as a Lord and personal Savior. It is grace. It is grace. It is favor that located you. Hallelujah. There are those who hear the message, who hear the gospel, and yet they've hardened their heart and they are not willing to accept the message of the cross. They are not willing to accept the message of the gospel. Because a certain grace and a certain favor has not located them. But I pray this morning that the grace of God that brings salvation will appear before them. Jesus. So the first encounter of God's favor, God's grace is in the area of salvation. In the area of salvation. We are saved by grace. We are saved by the favor of God. Do you remember when the children of Israel they spoke roughly against Moses? And said, Moses, they spoke roughly against Moses. And Moses complained. They, comp eh, they spoke roughly against Moses and God. And God shed serpent into the wilderness to destroy them, to bite them and to poison them and to kill them. But the Bible said the people cried out unto Moses and Moses, Moses, do something. Moses went to God and prayed to God. And God said, make a bronze shepherd, a bronze shepherd, that anyone who looks at the bronze shepherd, though the person has been bitten by the serpent or the snake, because the person looks at the bronze shepherd, that person will be saved. They were bitten by serpent, venom was in their body, and yet, because they lifted up their eyes to just look at the bronze shepherd, at the serpent, they didn't die. That serpent is a sign of God's faith, of God's grace, and God's favor. God has made his favor and his grace evident to us through Jesus. Jesus is it's, it's, it's a paradigm example of God's grace and favor that no man worked for his salvation. No man was involved in the work of salvation. That is why Peter tried to, to, to be involved. He said, Peter, put your sword back. Jesus. Favor located us. He said, We are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. We are saved because of the favor of God. We had favor with God. The favor that we lost, we gained that favor again. Hallelujah. Now, finding favor with God means that getting approval. We were not approved. When man sinned in the Garden of Eden, we were not approved. We lost the approval. We became vagabonds and street children. We could not call God our Father, Jesus. We could not call God our Father. We were not accepted. We were not accepted. But the Bible said, now having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are is because of the favor and the grace of God. Having this seal of the Holy Spirit, having this seal of the Holy Spirit by the grace and the favor of God made available to us through Christ. He said, the Lord knoweth them that are is. We are of God. I am born of God. I am a child of God. I have the seal of the Holy Ghost. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are is. The Lord knoweth them that are is. The Lord knoweth them that are is. So the first 
point of encountering God's favor is in the area of salvation. Favor had to locate us. God had to send a preacher man to come and preach to us for us to be saved and converted and to depart from the old ways and come into this glorious light. Favor had to locate us. The favor of God located us and took us to certain churches with certain preachers that preached the word of God for us to be saved. If we hadn't won, if we hadn't obtained the favor and grace of God at that time, there was no way we would have been able to produce faith. Hallelujah. It is true. We produce the faith to believe. But before the faith was produced, God asked to send a vessel, a messenger, to preach for you to produce faith. And before you even produce faith, God had to convict you by the Holy Spirit that this message is true. Hallelujah. So that is the first point of encountering God's favor and God's grace. God's favor and God's grace. He said, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay his life down for a friend. Wow. To lay your life down for a friend. That means that you love the friend so much. You love the friend so much. You love the friend so much. And the friend has obtained favor in your sight. That you are willing to give your life for him. Because we obtain favor in the sight of God. Jesus Christ willingly died on the cross for us. And now therefore there is no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. But the spirit of the Lord in Christ Jesus will overcome the law of sin and death. The purpose of that scripture, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, is to exalt the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The purpose of the scripture, that scripture, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, is not to categorize Christian into two. Christians that walk after the flesh and after the spirit. No. The purpose of that scripture is to exalt the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. The Bible says for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the work of the devil. Satan had a certain working in us that whenever you sin, he gained the right over you. But the Bible says, for this purpose, Christ was manifested that he may destroy that working of Satan. That whenever you sin, he becomes your Lord. He broke that cycle. We belong to God. We are of God. Favor and grace located us in the area of our salvation. In the area of our salvation. We are saved by grace through faith. The favor of God had to locate us. The favor of God had to locate us. Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a short man when Jesus was passing through Jericho. Zacchaeus said, I want to see Jesus, who he was. But when Jesus, even, and the Bible says Zacchaeus could not see Jesus because of what the press. And he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree. Now, when Jesus got to the place where the sycamore tree was and where Zacchaeus was, no one told Jesus the name of Zacchaeus, but Jesus mentioned the name of because the favor of God had already located Zacchaeus. So the favor of God drew Zacchaeus to Jesus. And Jesus said, the Son of Man came to seek. So before Zacchaeus even saw Jesus, the grace and the favor of God was seeking for Zacchaeus and bringing Zacchaeus to Jesus. So we first encountered God's grace in the area of our salvation. If not for the favor and grace of God, we located me when I was in KUST. I don't know where I will be. I don't know whether even this message and the ministry and the things that I'm doing in the kingdom will be possible. Grace and favor found me and located me. When I was in SS, I was a Cassio president, but I didn't have an understanding of what I was doing. Until grace and favor located me. 
Favor must locate you. Hallelujah. Favor in the area of salvation. That is the first point of encountering God's favor. Without encountering this favor first, it will be difficult. You need this first encounter of God's favor for greater height and exploit. For greater height and exploit. Jesus. He said, come unto me all day. Come unto me. All day that are heavy laden and burden, and I'll give you rest. God's favor. Greater love as this, greater love as no man than this. That a man should lay his life down for a friend. God laid his life down for us. A man should lay his life down for a friend. A man should lay his life down for a friend. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your favor and your grace which has located me, which has located us. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you, Lord, for saving us from the fires of hell. Thank you for bringing your son Jesus Christ as an embodiment and an evidence of your favor and your grace unto us. You gave him up as a gift, as a gift unto us. We are grateful for this gift, and we don't take this gift lightly. We don't take this gift lightly. We were on the road to hell, on the road to condemnation. But Jesus Christ came to introduce the favor and the grace of God. That we are not therefore, we are not, we, we are not therefore not condemned, but we are now saved. Father, thank you for saving a sinner like me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.